And let me tell you guys something, okay? It is the audacity for me. It is the audacity of some of you to think that you would not fall for the Tinder swindler. You're welcome to the Pleasant Heart Podcast, hosted by me, Adeze. Here, we discuss life as we know it to help us live life as we want it. Let's discuss the Tinder swindler, shall we? All right, so I finally watched the Tinder swindler yesterday, and the reason why I watched it was because I was seeing a lot of takes on the internet, left, right, and center. I kept seeing people's opinions about how, you know, these women were so dumb, they were so naive, how could they fall for this kind of scam? This is just like your scam 101, like it was a basic scam, you know, like the women were not intelligent enough to really clock this guy early enough. I was just seeing all of these and I was like, I don't want to go with head mentality. I don't want to judge these women before, you know, watching it for myself and hearing things directly from the documentary myself. So I decided to go and watch the documentary, okay? And let me tell you guys something, okay? It is the audacity for me. It is the audacity of some of you to think that you would not fall for the Tinder swindler. Some of you are being scammed by Tunde from Ibadan. You are being scammed from Namdi from Imo State. And you are trying... And mind you, this Tunde and Namdi did not give you guys anything, no. They didn't even try so hard. You guys are being scammed by the promise of love. On the promise of love. And that's it. And you are not coming here to tell us how you cannot fall for this. Meanwhile, anyway, before I dive into all of this, let me warn you guys that this episode is going to be full of spoilers, okay? So, if you haven't seen the Tinder Swindler, I suggest and I actually, yeah... I recommend that you go and watch it first before you come and watch or listen to this episode, okay? However, if you have watched it or, you know, you just want to skip to the good parts, don't want to watch it, then you are in the right place, okay? Yeah, so, like I was saying, it's the audacity for me. You guys, this um, guy, okay, let me start from the beginning, okay? His name is Simon Leviv. That's not actually his real name, but that's like his biggest the biggest name he used for his scams or the name he used frequently, but his name is, um, I've forgotten his name, okay, I didn't even bother to, to put it in my head, but I know that he was called Simon Leviv throughout the um, documentary, okay, and he's from Israel, he had done a lot of scams in Israel, I think he had defrauded three women, and then he went to jail from it, and then when he came out, or whether he escaped, no, he didn't go to jail, I think he escaped. He wasn't persecuted for it. He escaped and then he took on the Simon Leviv um, name and he, you know, was on Tinder and he was looking for women on Tinder and he kept telling them how he was a businessman who dealt in diamonds. He was the son of the, um, you know, very rich diamond dealer something something Leviv because there's someone who actually exists that is called that answers Leviv there's a family called you know Leviv so he was claiming to be their son he was claiming to be this very rich businessman who deals in diamonds okay so what he was doing was he was on tinder he had his flashy lifestyle pasted all over his tinder profile you okay you see him in private jets you see him on yachts you see him in parties you see him in clubs you know wearing expensive things expensive wristwatches like his Tinder profile was like, you know, exuding wealth and, you know, money. Like he was, he knew the kind of people he wanted to attract and he really like set his Tinder profile to attract, you know, such women. Okay. So in the documentary, they actually highlighted the three women that fell for his scam um, big time. But I'm sure there were so many, I think they were, no, I'm sure that there were so many women, there were so many other women who actually fell for his scam because according to what I read, he actually scammed women to the tune of, 10 million dollars like 10 million freaking dollars that's what he got from scam and basically how his scam works is like in a pyramid scheme okay i'll call it a pyramid scheme because he'll rob peter to pay paul you know he will rob cecilia use the money and take pamelia out you know on a date fly her out eat expensive food take her on private jets and yachts and stuff like that expensive parties and clubs and then he'll take money from pamelia or pamelia or Pamelia, I don't know what her name is, the second one. And then he'll go and trip his girlfriend, Eileen, and then he'll take money from Eileen and go and, you know, spend on Cecilia. That's what basically he was doing, okay? Just that it was more complicated than that. It was like a whole range of people that he was scamming. Anyway, why I said that some of you are just deceiving yourselves, <laughs> why I said that is that 
This guy actually took them on private jets. He flew them out. He paid for their tickets. He spent on them. He took them for expensive dinners to expensive hotels and stuff like that. And you're expecting them not to fall. But even though I say all this, I know for a fact that I personally wouldn't have fallen for that scam because first of all, I don't even have the money for that. Okay, where, where would I get that kind of thousands and thousands of dollars for to go and give man? And second of all, I've even done a video on this channel where I talked about how people are giving man money like i don't get it i will never get it i don't care the rationale or the excuse you want to give some people say um i'm just being nice when you're in love with somebody you just have to be nice to them i'm just being nice i'm sorry okay some of you that your excuse of just being nice you're not actually being nice and that's what actually played out in this you know tinder swindler scam and all of that some of you what you claim to do out of niceness you are actually doing it because you want something in return okay don't come and give me that oh i only gave the guy money because he's a friend it's what i'll do for any friend it's a lie a lot of you have friends female friends who are in financial need and you will not give them money but once a guy comes and talks one or two in fact for some of you he doesn't even ask you out it's just the prospect of someday being asked out by this guy you carry your money and go and give him to bribe him into loving you to bribe him into asking you out okay that's just the truth okay argue with yourself in the comment section i don't care <laughs> So it's funny when people say, oh, these girls were so dumb. This girl, they were not really dumb, okay? They were not really dumb. They were actually trying to do something to actually solidify the friendship or the relationship, okay? And I say friendship because the second person who he scammed, Pamelia, she was just a friend. They were not in a romantic relationship or they were not pretending to be in a romantic relationship, okay? Yeah, even though mm, in my head somewhere, I feel like, she was just she didn't want to date him okay she didn't want to date him but she wanted the perks of his lifestyle okay yes those women were gold diggers that's just the bottom line they even said it that one of the things that attracted them to simon was his lavish lifestyle okay so please even the second person that did not want to date him she admitted that he was too short for her liking but you know he he had this elegance around him he liked his lifestyle his dressing you know the places he took her to that was what she was attracted to and that was what she stayed for okay yes they said oh he had good conversations he was a good listener he was this and that i beg i beg i beg i beg is he the only good good conversationalist you've met is it the only good listener that you've met? Well, how come it didn't work out between you and the other people, okay? So the truth of the matter is that those women were gold diggers. They felt like they could, you know, cash in big by being with this... I think it was the thrill of this millionaire that, oh, he finds me worthy to be his girlfriend, to be his friend, so let me actually do something in return to show that, yes, I'm really in this. I'm really... It's about us. It's about our future, okay? Granted, the guy lied to them. You know, the guy... actually the first one and the last one. Um, the guy was basically telling them to look for apartments, telling them he wanted to have kids with him. Oh, 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 I forgot. The first person that, you know, they interviewed, I don't know, I don't think she's, she's not his first scam anyway, but the first person that was in the documentary, she talked about how, you know, the first day she met him, um, the he told her that he was traveling out, I think he took her out for dinner, and then he told her that he was traveling on business to Bulgaria, Okay. He was traveling on business to Bulgaria if she would come along. And this lady actually agreed to come along. And yeah, the next day she went on a private jet with him and they went to Bulgaria. And then in the private jet, okay, on the trip, his wife, not his wife, his baby mama and his daughter were on the trip, okay? So she said she talked with the baby mama and, you know, she met the daughter and all of that. And she just liked the fact that he was still involved in their lives, even though they were not romantically, you know, linked anymore. But he was happy that, she was happy that he was still involved in his daughter's life and this and that. And I was just like, I don't think I'll be very comfortable going on the first major date or major outing with someone and then his wife and baby mama are there. Like, what kind of desperation is that? That's another point, okay? A lot of these women were actually very, very desperate. They really, really wanted love and love from a millionaire, okay? That's just the truth. Because the first one said that she had been, that's um, Cecilia. She said she had been on Tinder for, was it 10 years or something? And she had gone on a thousand dates or, a hundred, or hundreds of dates. I can't remember what she said. But I was like, sister, again, what's happening? What's wrong with you? Okay, what is wrong with you if you've gone on this many dates and you're not still in a relationship at this time and you want a relationship, what is wrong with you? Because it can't be all the men you swiped, you know, you swiped on or that I, I swiped on you or whatever. It can't be all the men you met through Tinder that have the issues, okay? So, 
what is wrong with you sis another thing that people kept talking about and to me it kind of made sense was this my enemies are after me he kept saying that his enemies were after him in fact that's basically how he scammed them he said his enemies were after him he didn't have to, he couldn't use his cars and all of that to track so I told that the enemies don't track him so he had to use their cards he had to get cash from them but I use their cards and get cash. It's not it's not one thousand dollars. <laughs> Even one thousand dollars, if I don't think I'll wake up the next morning. But it's not one thousand dollars. It was thousands of dollars. Like the first one, the first Cecilia, I think she gave him over two hundred thousand dollars. Then the second one was like forty something thousand dollars. The third one was a hundred and forty thousand dollars. I'm just like what? Where when they see all this money? Like where are people getting all this money from? Okay, and again, these women are not even that's young they were young women but they were not that young i think simon was very very smart with his selection okay he didn't go for the 20 21 year olds or the 22 year olds who just want to be flowed out and given a good time he didn't go for them okay he went basically for women who were just around 28 29 30 at that age a lot of women start becoming conscious about their love life start wanting to settle down start wanting to have a family start wanting to meet someone great you know and just you know fall in love and all of that at that age majority of women want that okay i didn't say all women okay so if you don't fall into that category i'm not referring to you please okay i'm talking about majority of women at that age yeah it's, it's normal it's not a bad thing to want love like i mean it's normal so um, I could understand how that played a role in them being scammed because, yeah, they were giving love a chance, okay, even though, uh, yeah, the money was one of the biggest reasons they were giving that love a chance because I looked through their, I, I, you know, I mean, they read out their chats and their conversations and everything sounded so, blah, so basic, so, like, he wasn't saying anything extra special, he was, he sounded very corny, you know, majority of the time. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, his conversations were just very, very, very basic, like, there was nothing special about it and even when the women said he was a very good listener i'm like of course he's a very good listener because he wants to know more about you he wants to know how how much he can scam out of you and how well he can scam you so of course he was a very good listener and i'm sure see the truth be told uh, i like people that are very good listeners but sometimes it's when it gets to the extreme it actually becomes boring okay because you need to be giving me back some information as well so something that a lot of people pointed out was the fact that he kept talking about how his enemies are after him his enemies are after him and they felt that you know these girls were so dumb for falling for that and i'm like no they weren't really dumb for falling for that because okay remember whenever he opens up to them he tells them how he was in prison how there was a deal gone bad in south africa he tells them about how you know he deals in diamonds how some part of his business you know is kind of shady you know from the way he describes his business you can tell that some part of it is kind of shady i mean of course the whole thing is not doesn't even exist but i'm just saying like if you met someone that worked in the diamond industry of course you will believe that some part of their business is going to be shady considering how you know how much controversy um, surrounds diamonds in in the world okay mining of diamonds and how diamonds are being mined and sold and who sells it and who takes the money and stuff like that there's a lot of controversy around this so i don't think it's that far-fetched to believe that he has enemies like it's not that far-fetched to me at least Again, like I said, I wouldn't have fallen for his scam, but I'm trying to see things from this women's perspective. Instead of just labeling them as just dumb bimbos who don't have sense, I think it is a disservice to them to just label them like that without actually sitting down to think about what this guy was telling them as well, okay? You know? And again, like I said, they saw the lavish lifestyle. It wasn't just online talks initially when i even heard about the tinder swindler i was thinking it's all these normal yahoo nigerian boys you know romance scam where they can scam old women abroad and collect money from them it wasn't that okay these were young women or youngish women okay when it comes to such things these are relatively young women these were career women i mean for them to get that kind of money like <laughs> these were career women these were women who were working had money but you know wanted love and really wanted a guy on their level at the same time or higher hypergamy and stuff like that okay because if you think about it one of the reasons why those women were attracted to okay i think i even said it that one of the reasons those women were attracted to simon was his lavish lifestyle okay so when you are rich as a woman or when you have your own money as a woman you tend to look for a man who is even richer and even has more money okay most people don't like to date down and just and that's just the fact okay yeah diamond trade diamond business is not a very straightforward business okay um yeah well 
yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying at this point. So, he even had a bodyguard. I mean, like I said, he sold his story very well. And I think that added to the bad boy persona that he wanted to have or that attracts women to men sometimes. Because we all know how a lot of good guys finish last. A lot of women don't like good guys. A lot of women find good guys boring. A lot of women find, you know, guys that are on the straight and narrow paths. They find them boring. They want to follow men who are on the fast lane who are you know bad guys you know some form of element of danger you know they find it sexy when a guy has some element of danger to him you know he tells you about his enemies and you're like oh my god he's so special that's why he has enemies he's such a big deal you know and you want to be a part of that i don't even i don't even understand the truth of wanting to be a part of you know and any someone that has enemies like to me if the guy had Told, in fact, once the guy had told me he has enemies, I'm going to be like, peace here, see you never, because that's it. Like, oh, so you have enemies, me, I now want to come and enter, so that they'll come and chase me on top of money where I don't get. <laughs> you know? So they will not come and start fighting me when I don't even have money. I don't even know anything about your trade, though. You have not even really actually given me any money. You just, yeah, giving me a good time. And I want to enter that kind of lifestyle, you know? So, um, for me, it have been a very huge turn off. Not a red flag, per se. It would have been a turn off. I would have said... I don't want someone who has enemies but again like i said a lot of women like bad guys me i don't like bad guys i have never been treated by bad guys like to me yeah i've never been someone that, was treated, that is treated by you know guys that are living on the dangerous lane what's the thrill of having a bad guy in your in your corner like i don't get it or uh, people that used to go and date cultists and you know he's a cultist or people that even date yahoo boys and you know he's a yahoo boy i'm like are you sure all is well in your head no, something not right, right with you for you to want that kind of guy. I'm sorry, that's just the truth. There's something not right with you. There's something missing in your from when you were born to that point. Something went wrong. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So when he says his enemies are, are are after him, so he can't use his credit cards, so they don't track him. This and that. He wants to use their credit cards. Okay. So the women had to give him their credit cards, which is first of all against the law. I think it is, it should be against the law for you to give someone else your credit card and your details, okay? Then secondly, he maxed out the credit card immediately. I'm sure it also made sense to them because, I mean, he's a rich guy and he spends a lot. So it made sense for him to take my credit card and spend a lot because that's, what, that's his normal spending on a normal day, okay? Again, it doesn't make sense to me, but I can see how it makes sense to those women, right? Um, then he told Cecilia to bring cash to him. She had to take a loan to bring cash to this guy. And I'm sorry. Uh, yes, this women, are, this women are kind of dumb, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say it. They were kind of not... Okay, let me not call it dumb. They were not being dumb. I feel like I'm just rambling, but they were not dumb. I won't say they were dumb. I will say they were blinded. You know how... They say love, love is blind, or love blinds people. They were blinded by love, which I don't really regard as love. I see it as they were blinded by this fairy tale that they had in their heads that, oh, they are going to be marrying this very rich, you know, diamond prince. Which one was even calling him a prince. I'm going to marry this rich prince. Like this prince, this prince actually came to sweep me off my feet and rescue me from this mundane existence <laughs> if only those women knew that they were richer than this guy like if only they knew that <laughs> this is a nobody okay uh, and again even his looks he was basic looking he wasn't that attractive to me he was even short so i'm just like what was the trail sis yeah he sold them a lie and they really believed this lie so that lie made them not think straight anymore for you to go and take a loan on someone's behalf because for me eh, what i would have said if okay this is me right if i meet a guy and he's a millionaire he's very rich he's this he's that he has enemies let's say that that doesn't even turn me off and i really want to be with him and then he tells me that you know he wants to use my credit card so that he doesn't get tracked um but he will send me back the money i would have said oga send the money first and then use my card yes when you in fact just send the money in fact, i'll give you my empty card without any money inside i give you my empty card and then transfer money into it and then spend it like how is that hard to do why must i why must i give you now now and why do i have to give you my own money 
if you're very very rich why can't you use your own money just send it to my card and then use it like don't even leave anything for me there once you finish spending it give me my card back okay that's what i would have done in that situation but these women were blinded again like i said by the prospect of being this millionaire's wife they sent him their credit cards they took loans on his behalf i'm like it's not possible it's not possible i don't think i can even take loan on my husband's behalf i'm, I'm sorry i don't even think i can do that <laughs> And then he now told them to start lying because the cards were being blocked by American Express. Is it American Express? Yeah. The cards were being blocked by American Express. He would tell them to lie and say that the ones using the cards. He even had to fake employ one of them, that's Cecilia, so that she can justify the amount she was taking as loan. He would give her one actress. I think she was earning like ninety thousand dollars a month in his business okay fake business so yeah she used that as a collateral like i think that's how it works now basically when you check someone's income you now know the amount you can give that person comfortably so he used that or she used that to increase the money she was borrowing and the money she was giving him to the tune of 200k you know so he swindled her he swindled cecilia um, i mean pamelia or whatever and then the last person was eileen when eileen saw you know this tinder swindler in the news she confronted him and he was like no and, and that's the funny thing about this guy when the women actually find out that he scammed them he did not cut contact with them because i was thinking that ah next thing they'll go and chat him up and they are blocked nope he kept you know trying to convince them that it's not true it's not true i was like this guy you're very wicked though like you <laughs> like you're very wicked like he was see, he was trying to see if he can even get even more from them you know anyway that's what he tried to do with eileen um, for Cecilia, he gave her a fake Rolex, so she's the one that helped him get um, video uh, photographed in public, so they will know that, yes, this guy is actually the one doing all of this. Then, then the last one, Eileen, was the one that helped him to get caught because she told them where he was flying to, right? But Eileen also scammed him back, you know, in her own little way. When he got cash traps, because after that, um, after the news broke out, he was cash trapped. He wasn't getting any money anymore. He then asked Eileen to give him some money, you know, and she said she didn't have any money to give him, that what she could help him do was to sell because she's, she's into the luxury, she's in luxury fashion business, yeah. She's in luxury fashion business, or fashion luxury, luxury fashion business, yeah. So she told him that she could help him sell all his expensive clothes because he was wearing like real expensive clothes, that he could help her sell all her ex, all his expensive clothes and give him the money. So the guy foolishly agreed, you know, was very grateful to her, hoping, you know, was he even wrote, even wrote a letter to her, you know, telling her how he loves her, how he wants them to be together, that she's doing this for their future, this and nonsense, very corny, very cringy kind of thing, like, it's not something that personally I would fall for, but yeah, she fell for it, okay, well, before then she was falling for it, so at this point, when she got all his clothes, she took them and she went and sold all of them and then kept the money for herself. I think at the time of this documentary, she was even still selling some, you know, so she sold them and kept the money for herself. And that's when the guy's true color now came out. Like he would call her on the phone, he'll be insulting her, shouting, screaming at her, threatening her, threatening her is going to kill her, his enemies are going to come for her, this and that. Oh, by the way, the first person he scammed actually checked herself into a mental institution because yeah she was mental hospital because she was running mad imagine losing that kind of money the second person's own was money for her apartment the first person's own was basically her life savings plus more even money which she no gets yeah hey because she loans she borrowed money for him for him and then the third person's own was um, basically her money as well but yeah so she kept some of those money she kept the money to herself and she helped him get caught but anyway um in all of these the guy is now out of jail. I think they said he was. He went to jail for 14 months or 15 months for his crimes, but he served only five because of coronavirus and things like that. So right now he is out of jail and living his best life. Like he's now still rich. Um, I don't know how he's make he's making his money. Maybe I think they say it's true Bitcoin and stuff like that. I'm sure he's scamming more people. Um, he's dating he's dating a model. He's dating a Russian model. Living his best life. Oh. Mind you, while all these things were going on, he had 130k followers on Instagram. Okay, so some of these people that you are following on Instagram and you just enjoy their lifestyle and you don't know how they're making their money, yeah, you should better be looking into these things though. Because I remember Hush Puppy had like 2.1 million followers, and I'm just like, I never had the urge to follow Hush Puppy for one day. Like, what am I following him for? To see what? Like, anyway, people are different. I'm not saying you are bad for following him. I'm just saying when you're following such people, when you're saying God when, God when. 
better be careful and know where they're getting their wealth from and know if God can give you that kind of wealth, okay? <laughs> the devil can give you, but you know, he'll take something back in return. Um, after the documentary came out, he went a wall. I think he disabled his Instagram, you know, he went a wall, but I think he's back now again. Um, they banned him from several dating sites, but I'm sure he will find a way. Um, yeah, that's it for him. For the women, they put out a GoFundMe, you know, link so that people can donate for them to pay up pay off their debt to the tune of was it two hundred thousand dollars or two million or two hundred thousand dollar dollars yeah they put a gofundme out and people are like for what <laughs> after they scams you want to come and scam us for what you know and i yeah i feel bad for the women but at the same time i don't really feel bad for them because yeah you kind of laid your bed you know you kind of laid your bed so lie in it sis and enjoy yourself there but I think it just serves as a warning to everybody out there. But trust me, people will still fall. So scams, it's not today scams that are happening. Scams have been happening from time immemorial and they will keep happening because a lot of women are crazy in love, okay? A lot of women are not doing their due diligence. A lot of women are being swept off by, you know, material things, by the thought of hypergamy or the thought of, you know, dating up and getting a rich guy. So for me, the women also scam themselves, okay? Now you scam yourself because... You, we are building this castle in the air and refuse to sit down and think, okay? If you ask me, the women were being very shallow and they got what they wanted because whenever your criteria for dating someone is a shallow criteria, you are, you are going to get what you asked for, okay? You are going to get what you asked <laughs> for. That's just the truth. The same way when guys have shallow criteria of getting women, they now come back tomorrow and start complaining about the women. I'm like... What I complaining about? You were attracted by big bomb bomb and you know flashy lifestyle. How do you think she was affording that lifestyle when she doesn't have anything she's doing with, her, with herself? She doesn't have a career and stuff like that. You see her on Instagram, she's flaunting. When you now go there and she's scamming you for money, and I'm like, ah, oh, women are so materialistic. Eh, eh. You saw, you skipped a lot of decent, nice looking women who wanted love. You skipped them and you went to the one that wanted you know uh, money and was showing big bomb bomb and now you're complaining you know so it's the same thing for the women you skip you skipped a lot of guys who had more to offer than just money and then now you're complaining that they scammed you you scammed yourself okay anyway let me know your thoughts in the comment section let me know what you think thank you so much for listening and i'll see you in my next episode bye guys